too fast, just tell me to slow down. The first thing I do is the easiest question all day. What is your name, first and last, and the correct spelling of it, so I can get it on tape? Agnes, A-G-N-E-S, Fusen, F-U-S-O-N. And is that your maiden or a married name? That's my married name. And what was your maiden name? Bolte, B-O-L-T-E. And if I can be so rude and impolite as to ask, when and where were you born? Well, actually, I was born in Minnesota, but I, I can't tell you. I always tell people in North Dakota because before I was a year old, we moved to North Dakota. Do, do you remember what part of Minnesota? I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. What were your parents' name? Oh, oh, wait. So what was your birth date? May 12, 1919. Birthday's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> well, what were your parents' name, your mom and your dad? Um, Antone and Dorothy Bolte. So Bolte, is that, what nationality is that? They were from, the grandparents were from Germany. Oh. I'm Carl Gustav Schmidt, I mean, mm -hmm. but I don't speak a word of German. Is this being recorded? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you grow up then? In North Dakota. What, what part? What? Uh, South Western North Dakota, in a little village called Regent. Now that's one I haven't been to. No, probably not. It's <laughs> a very small place. I've been to a lot of real small places, but mm -hmm. I miss Regent. Mm -hmm. huh. What was it like? What, what, did, what did your parents do there? We lived on a farm. Mm -hmm. And they, they had, you know, we, had cat, we had a few cattle and a few sheep. And, and then, of course, they grew wheat and corn and all, all those things. My dad drove a school bus for a number of years. So, I mean, it's just a little village. I don't know how many people were there, but not very many. D did you have brothers and sisters? Yes. H how many? I had two sisters and six brothers. That's a football team. <laughs> there were so nine kids. Mm -hmm. Wow! I guess they needed ranch hands. Huh? They needed farm workers. <laughs> uh. There was a lot of larger families in that area. So where did you fit in the pecking order? Uh, I, I'm the second to. And I have a brother that's older, and the rest are all younger than I am. Oh, okay. So what was it like growing up there? Was it a tough life or a fun life as a child? Well, people said, oh my goodness, you know, you grew up in those hard times. We didn't know that it was hard times. We always had something to eat and we always had something to wear. And um, we probably went to the neighbors um, every so many Sundays uh, on horseback or the neighbors came over. And... Um, as long as I can remember, I helped with the milking and all the chores that had to be done, things like that. So, was there a school in the town? Or? Yes, we went to school. Mm -hmm. I was thirteen in my high school graduating class. So, big class. Yeah, <laughs> you guys almost had more brothers and sisters than your whole class. <laughs> huh. Well, um, it's interesting because, I mean, just the way you described it, where, where history says it was a tough time, we're going through the Depression and all of that, but yet as a, as a person growing up... We, uh, we never knew what hard times were, I guess, you know. Um, when, I, when people would ask me that, why well, I would think about it, and I don't know. We, like I said, we had what we need to be comfortable. So... Do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Um, I was working. I worked in, um, in a uh, gro sort of a grocery store, kind of an all-purpose uh, store. Yeah. So. And what was that like when you heard that? When, when what, I, what was that like when you heard that Pearl? I, I, just, I didn't really understand what war was all about but I knew it wasn't good. 
and uh, shortly, seems like shortly after I heard it, and even before, um, people, young people that I knew were going to the service. And that's one reason why I went to the service, because um, um, the people my age were either in the service, uh, the men especially, and, um, the, and then the rest of them were working in, in war plants, or, you know, plants making whatever they made, you know, weapons and all that stuff. So, and there just wasn't anybody there, so I just decided that I was going to go to the, the, the waves. So how, it's interesting. So how did you pick the waves? You could have been a whack, you could have been a wave, you could have been a... I don't know. I don't know why I did. I think it's because... I had a couple of brothers that were in the Navy, and that's uh, that, that's why I probably went. I don't, I don't really, I really can't say why I chose it. So, did your brothers get in the service before the war started, or did they get in after the war started? One, one was in before, and one went in after the war started. So, so what was that like having two brothers in the service? I mean, did you worry about them? Or? Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so where did you sign up for the waves? At uh, Mott, North Dakota, which is a close little town close to where I lived. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? How did you sign up at that time, and what, what happened? Well, they just, oh, this just, I just said I wanted to go, and they said, all right, just fill out these papers, and that, that's what I did. And, and they told me I would leave. Um, well, I, si I signed up so that I would start my um, active duty or going into the service on uh, June 1 and uh, 44. And that's it. So where did they, where did they, well, did you have to go home and tell your parents? Hmm? Did you have to go and tell your mom and dad that you had signed up for the service? Uh, well, my dad wasn't necessarily in favor of it, but he said, um, you're, you're a grown-up woman, you have a mind of your own, if that's what you want to do, do it. So, mm -hmm. what, what did mom say? Well, she didn't say much, but I knew she was kind of with him, thinking that I probably, they would rather that I wouldn't go, so. so. Now, how old were you then? Well, 40, and uh, that was in 44, and I was born in 19, so. Oh, okay. Makes me, what, about 20-something, in the 20s. Hey, wait a minute. 25. That's about, what, that's about what I was, so. Which is interesting, because you were older than a lot of the men. A lot of the, the boys cheated, and they yeah, yeah. went in it. My brothers were younger, see, so. so. Uh, yeah. So where did they send you for training? Well, uh, this I thought was interesting. I used to, once in a blue moon, we'd go to neighbors, a neighboring town on a train. But uh, I went from a train from uh, Mott, North Dakota, to Hunter College in New York on train. And um, that was really quite an experience. We stepped... Um, I slept on the third deck of a of a sleeper, but I slept. You know, that's the way it goes. So it was. And then uh, the rest of my training, I did um, a bit medical training at the Hunter College. I don't know. That was probably two and a half months or something like that. Very very concentrated study. And then we, then we our group. Went to Bethesda, Maryland, to do some more studying, and um, then they asked. When we got through there, they asked me um, if there was any part of the United States that I would like. First, they asked me if I'd like to go overseas, and I said no. I uh, get seasick too easily, and so what? Any part of the country that I would like to go to, and I said I'd like to go to the, to the West Coast. So they sent me to Shoemaker, California, and it was the largest military hospital on one floor. So it was, you know, you went this way and it was a branch to branch to branch, you know. Yep. 
So when you enlisted, did you tell them what you wanted to train for, or did they just assign you to something? No, I, I asked to go into um, hospital work, because I, I at one time thought of becoming a nurse, but that just didn't work out because of health, uh, my mother's health at the time. So, so. So did they train you to be a nurse in the service then? Is that what you ended up being, was a nurse? That's what I was. That's what I was. So I'm going to back up just a little bit. I'll bounce around a little bit. When you enlisted, did you have to do, raise your right hand and do all that? And if so, where and what was that like? Well, it's kind of emotional. I think, well, what am I really getting into? So... But I had made up my mind to do it, so I, I was going to do it. Had you ever been away from home like this before? Mm. Was that hard? Well, you know, a weekend or something like that, but, you know. Yeah, it was, but, you know, you were so busy. There were so many new things happening, so many new things that you were seeing. The time just went, you know, it just, it just went, because, we, you know, Going across the United States, practically on a train, there was lots of things, and we made many, many stops because they picked up people going into the service uh, as as we went on through. You know, so. You know. That was going to be my next question: was who was on the train with you? Other uh, uh, waves, or were there uh, soldiers? Or no, we were in the car that we were on was all uh, women going in the waves. Mm -hmm. And there was one lady that was came, um, one girl that was uh, in, in one of my neighboring towns, and we got to be friends, uh, you know, in the service uh, as we served, so. Do you remember what you talked about on that train going back? It must have been overwhelming and exciting and scary. And yeah, well, we just talked about the scenery, and we talked to each other, and we got to know each other, and I met um, one of the gr uh, groups that were there was a, a set of girls, triplets. And I'd never met triplets before, and I thought that was pretty special. Although there were two sets of twins in my family. My mother had two sets of twins. Uh, but meeting these triplets, and they looked so alike, I never knew which one I was talking to. So, When you got on the train, had they issued you a uniform yet, or when did that happen? No, we were given our uniforms uh, at Hunter. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? What was your uniform and how'd they give it to you? Well, they just uh, asked us our size. If there was a question, they measured us. And I brought a picture along when I was in, the, in there. So, yeah, they just gave me the whole works. So what was your uniform? What, what did it look like? Well, they were blue uniforms, and there was a skirt and a, and a blouse and, and a, a coat, you know, a, a coat that went with it, so. Yeah. Is that what you would end up wearing later, or did you then wear a traditional nurse's uniform? Well, we had, uh, we had a uniform type, a seersucker uniform type that we worked while on duty at the hospital, yeah. Did, did you hold a rank? Hmm? Did you hold a rank? In the service, a title? I was a corpsman. Corpsman. I ended up being a corpsman first class. So that that's in a nurse actually. You know, we did all the work the nurses did, but the nurses uh, mostly kept the records. You know, so. Mm -hmm. So, their their training was it was it just traditional nurse training, or did they train you different for war aspects of what you would be facing? Well, they, the training was uh, how to care for a person who needed help. So, so that's, and, and I don't know. We learned how to give shots by uh, giving a shot to, to an orange, you know, and stuff like that, you know. So, so what was your duty at um, the hospital in California? Caring for individual uh, soldiers or sailors. So were these people that had come back from overseas or were they just 
people that have gotten sick stateside or? Yes, they came from war fields. Lots of young boys. I, I, I just can't, I just can't talk about more than I tried to make them comfortable. It's too emotional. Did you feel good about what you did? Did I what? Feel good. I mean, did you feel that you were doing your part for America? What, I mean, what did you feel, I guess? Well, indeed, it made me feel good that I was uh, helping uh, young men who desperately needed help and trying to make them more comfortable and, you know, and try to be their friend and and try to keep them, you know, uh, we used to talk about family and stuff like that and, you know, yeah, so. That's what I was wondering because, you know, movies and the history books make it look like everybody talked about one thing, but in reality, what was it you would talk about with them? Well, you know, we talked about uh, where these different people came from and some of the things, you know, would come out of what they did and I'll be so glad when I can go back to work and, you know, stuff like that. And then, then we'd find out what they were doing in, in, uh, before they came to the service and what they were hoping to go back to. And so, Did many of them talk about war or did they try to talk about other things? Too? No, they didn't talk about war. Anything yeah. but? Anything, anything but. but. Yeah. Do you, yeah. When you think back, I mean, it's been a long time. When you think back, are there certain patients that, that stick out that you remember all of that funny little guy or anything like that? Yes, indeed. Who, who were some of the ones or what were they like? That Well, they were just special fellas. And they had special needs, and uh, I don't. I, you know, I met so many. I don't know really what parts of forgotten what parts of the company they came from or something like that. But yes, to this day, I I wonder if certain fellows are still in this world. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you keep in touch with any of them, or were there just so many that? No, I never did really keep in touch with any of them. Mm -hmm. Where, where did you live when you were there? On base, off base? No, we had living quarters. Mm -hmm. Right there. Mm -hmm. So what was your work schedule like? How many days a week? How many hours? Well, it depended. We, most of the time it was, uh, uh, you know, just like eight to four type thing. Uh, sometimes we had to do special duty which really was after we finished our duty, maybe an hour afterwards, our regular work, we had to go on special uh, watch on certain people. So it made a long day. Yeah, so. So special watch on mm -hmm. the ward versus? It was probably on a different ward, but then it was, you know, so. So was it, do you remember any of your nurse coworkers? Well, I couldn't give you a name of any of them, but yes, I remember some, some, and there were different types. There were different types. I mean, some you couldn't help but like right away, and and some, you know, how that goes. <laughs> that was very politically put. I love that. Some, my wife's a nurse, so I, I understand 100% what you're saying about some you like and right away, and like you said, some, yeah. you know. Take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. Did you, do, were the nurses that you worked with in there for a variety of reasons? Did some have husbands or brothers or spouses in the service? Or why did they become nurses, do you think? I, d I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, actually, you know, you were so busy, you didn't have time to just sit down and visit type thing. And actually, uh, the corpsman, did most of the work that nurses ordinarily do. The nurses that would keep records. They had to, you know, they had to keep very specific rest, re records, I think. And, and they were always at the desk doing something, you know, in regard to the, 
the fellas and whatever they had to have whatever they had to keep or they were do they were doing so so but now you were a corpsman though right so yeah you were busy. we did the actual work and we did most most of the work that you see nurses do in the hospital nowadays and uh, sometimes when I look back at it I think well how in four or five months, five months, did I, uh, could I take care of somebody when nowadays it takes so many years of nurses training? But you know, we gave shots, we gave out medication, and, and you know, we gave baths and all the necessary things. The, the nurses sometimes did do some of the, if they were, uh, you know, casts or something like that, we didn't do that part of it, so. And you were on the floor, not in the operating room, or were you? No, we. I never was in the operating room, no. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have the coincidence of having a patient who was somebody who you knew prior to the war? No. Huh. Never did. But the way you describe this hospital, it sounds like it was endless. It was just... Huge. It was quite an establishment. It was a big—I don't know how many people were there, but it, it was a big. It was a big, uh, big hospital. Yeah. Did it give you a different view of war at this point? Because, because I, you know, the only the only thing I could think of is why. Why do people have to go through this? Because I would assume, and I've never been in the situation, but when you were um, in North Dakota and you heard about the war versus being in California on this ward, two different views of, of war because it's so far removed here and this was the reality, not the movies, not Clark Gable, it was real people. Mm -hmm. Did, 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 and I assume, and again, if I ask a question that isn't something you want to talk about, just tell me to move on. I assume you probably lost some. I did, you what? Probably lost some patients that they, did it get any easier or was it just made it even worse? What, um, when you had free time, which sounds like there was very little free time, did you have a group of nurses that you would go do something with? Yeah, we'd go sightseeing. Yeah, we, you know, I was, um, we'd go to the neighboring towns and mostly to San Jose and we'd do the different things. And, and they, um, they used to have um, entertainers come in you know, actors and put on a show and stuff like that, and we got to go to these things, so. Do you remember any of who it was? No, <laughs> no. Because I assume there were some big names, but then there also were some that were just coming up or going down. That, yeah. You know, they were funny and good, so. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's, um, would you go out dancing or anything like that? Yes. So where would you go and what was that like? Well, they they, they generally had dances every so often. And the, the, uh, people would, uh, family would come in or friends would come in that were not service people. And we would, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of fun dancing. So, so what, now you had a brother that was in the Navy, correct? Mm -hmm. Two. Two. Where did they end up? Oh, gosh, I couldn't say. I mean, were they in um, S South Pacific, or were they in Europe, or are you? One of them served overseas, but I don't, the other one didn't, and I can't, I can't really remember where they were. It's 60-plus mm. years. Mm. I can't remember what I had for lunch. <laughs> uh, did we learn anything from World War II, do you think, from your perspective? Did Did, did we learn anything from... Learn? Learn, yeah. Oh, well, heavens only 
wish that they did, but why are they still why are they still messing around? Yeah. Do you think there's a message for future generations that you would like to leave about war? Well, I wish that they could solve the problems that are causing these without having to go into situations that they end up getting into. Something besides, uh, so to speak, war. Yeah, so. What did you do after the service? Well, I started uh, just an ordinary life, I guess. I was married, see, and so we just, uh, my husband uh, was a, in school business, and he, he had a job right after he got out of the service, and, and then he went on to school to finish his schooling, and so we just were in the school business, that's uh, so. Now, he was in the service when you were in the service? Mm -hmm. Marine. And you were married then? or, mm -hmm. or Okay, well, let me back up. Where did you meet your husband? At Shoemaker. It was the uniform, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what was your husband's name? Thornton. Houston. And, and how did you meet him? I met him as a patient. So he had already... He had emergency uh, surgery when I met him. And it was it love at first sight, or did he have to work on you for a while, or...? Well, he was a pretty special guy the first time I met him. And, and so what was your courting time like? What... Tell, tell, me, your, tell me your love story. What, what happened? Well, it's just, just like any other, I guess. We went together so long, and we were eventually married, and, and started life together. So was he, the fact that he was in the hospital as a patient, was he pretty much done with his service at that time? I mean, did he heal up and then, then out from the service, or did he have to go back for a while after you? Well, he got out on his father uh, was very, very ill, so he got permission to leave the, the service and, mm -hmm. yeah. And did you get married down, mm -hmm. did you get married in California or? Yes. So what, what was the wedding like? Did family come down or was it a no. true military? No. no, they didn't. So what was it, what was the wedding like? Who was there? The preacher. <laughs> yeah. No, no witnesses? No. Oh, yeah. You know, you have to have the certain things they require that you have, I guess, or you wanted to have. So, yeah. So. So how long were you in the waves? In the waves? Yeah. Well, I actually wasn't in very long. I went in in June of 44, and I got out in November of 45. So... That was a long time, though, considering what you were dealing um, with. Yeah. If, anyway. if you knew what you knew today, would you do exactly what you did back then? Well, I would think about it twice, but yes, uh, you know, knowing what I know now, those people, those young fellows needed help. And um, if I thought I could help them, I would. And I would still do it to this very day. So, yeah. was well, it's interesting because I've talked to a lot of different people, and everybody went in for a different reason. Some went in whether it was into the service or became a Rosie, because there had been no jobs, and this was an opportunity to get a job. Some went in because a brother was in, a father was in. Some because of a patriotic uh, aspect. What about you? Well, some were called because their number was, uh, some went in because their number was called. I just chose to do that. Be like I said, because there was nobody of my age around the little community anymore. So. Did it become patriotic, though? Or was it just a, like any other job? Well, no, I was doing something uh, for 
are my fellow men or fellow citizens type thing, you know. Yeah, so. Do, do you remember when you heard that the war was over? Well, I, I don't actually remember when it was. So uh, I'm sure I did at the time, but I don't actually remember when it was over. You know, it's funny because history books make it sound like the whole world stopped and had a party and all that. But a lot of places, just like today, there can be a major event that some people are real involved with it and other people are busy doing life, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. And it sounds like you were ready to move on with your life. And mm -hmm. So where did you, out of the service, where and when and, and how do you do that? Well, we just we just went uh, in an office and and signed out, you know, and uh, my husband and I hitchhiked um, back to Montana, mostly hitchhiked. So, yeah. So now that's a whole different perspective. Was it safe back then to hitchhike? Well, people were very, very good about giving us. We, except for a very short time, we, a uh, very short distance, we hitchhiked from Shoemaker to uh, Belfry, Montana, and uh, all we did was put our thumb out, and people would give us a ride for maybe, maybe so, just a few miles, maybe quite a long while. So that's the way we. Mm -hmm, so. Was your husband still in uniform at the time, or was he? We were both. We were both in uniform. So people were proud. Well, we had our uniforms on, although we had signed out. You right. know, we were still. But I mean, people were glad to help these people that had helped the country. And, That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it a simpler time back then? Do you think simpler, uh, less complicated, more innocent? I don't. Was 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 life simpler back then? That well, on the farm it was, but it wasn't uh, well while in the service. Because there's always something, you know, going on. Always, always something. Yeah. In fact, I don't know whether you'd be interested in this or not, but I was in a movie when I was in the service. I don't know whether I I was in the movie Waves. Um, when when I was in New York City, when at Hunter, they were making this movie, The Waves, and I happened to be a character in the there. I do not remember uh, who the the real the actresses that took the main part, but I remember marching in the movie. So I always saw, and I never ever saw the movie. Oh, you never saw it. No. So you saw, didn't even get to figure out where you were in it. I know I I could spot myself just like that if I if I would see the mo movie. But. So was it a movie that was released to the theaters, or was it a movie that was um, like the Department of Defense made movies that they that educated people about you know the wave women or was it an entertainment movie or a? Well, I would say it was a a movie about the waves, you know. The, the history of the waves or something, so. I'll have to try to remember when I go home to search it on the internet to see if I can. Well, I've often thought I'd go into a place and ask them to see if they could, you know, uh, bring it to or get it for me, but I just never have done it, so. I, I'll try to remember. I'm usually pretty good. So, and that was, and you think that was the title of it, Waves? Mm-hmm, The Waves. The Waves, huh. I'll look it up. I've talked to a lot of uh, uh, women that were back at Hunter. I talked to some women that, that landed there in winter, and it was before they were really ready for them, so they didn't have the uniforms. It was cold. It was terrible. But then they finally got them the right size uniform and everything like that. It sounds mm -hmm. like when you got there, you got a uniform that fit. And, uh, mm -hmm. well, excuse me. What was your best part of being in the service? Well, I would say the best part was hoping that I was doing something to make uh, the soldiers, or the people, more comfortable. And the other thing was 
the travel that was involved, because I got to see uh, parts of the country that I, some of it I've never seen again. And, um, you know, coming from North Dakota, it was special, some of the areas that I saw, you know, so very, very special. So. That's what makes it uh, uh, interesting, because there's the tragedy of war, and then there's this amazing part, people like yourself, that, that opened doors and exposed you to, you know, for all you know, you'd still be living in South Dakota if, if there hadn't been a war. It was North Dakota. <laughs> or North Dakota, sorry. <laughs> Wrong Dakota. Uh, what was the worst part of being in the service? Well... Well, just the, the conditions that you found uh, certain, you know, people in, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I admire the people that did it, that, like yourself, that could care for these young men and women. <laughs> and to see how severely it has affected you even 60 years later that it's not a, it, it doesn't go away, does it? No. It will never go away. Did you, so you didn't continue nursing after you got out of the service? No. Did you just decide it wasn't your cup of tea or you just found something better? To well, I kind of went, uh, followed the steps of my husband, you know, in the, and you know, he went on to finish his schooling and, you know, stuff like that, so. Did he, was he able to take advantage of the GI Bill? Mm-hmm. And what about yourself? I never ever did. Could, you could have, though, couldn't you? Was, I could have had. You were too busy. Because I, I guess I just considered myself just a housewife then. <laughs> Has the world for women changed? because of World War II, do you think? Oh, I think so. I think that um, since then, women uh, are recognized that they can do things besides keep house and raise kids. So, I mean, now we have, you name it, there's a woman that does it, where it used to be before that time, it seemed like it was just men who did the, these jobs and political things and stuff like that, you know. Do you think that your mom and dad were proud of you? Yes, I, I'm sure they were, yeah. That they had, you know, a couple of sons and a daughter that served, you know, that that was, like, I always say, I'm, I'm happy that... Uh, Oh, well, that I went through it. I don't, yeah, I don't know just how to say that, but anyway, if I'd uh, never gone to the wave or worked in the hospital, I would never ever know what it was all about. You can't learn it by talking to somebody. You can't learn it by looking at a at a movie. It's it's just a different world. Yeah, I understand what you're saying about if you hadn't gone through it. It's not something that you would say, oh, I really want to go through that. But looking back, I assume for you, it, it probably helped you. I mean, besides the hardship of it, but of developing as a person, uh, it probably shaped some of your views of the world and yeah. of yourself. Yeah. Uh, do, do you remember, did your mom and dad have... Um, did they hang the star flags up for your brothers? And if so, did they also hang it up for you that said, you know, we have somebody in the service? I don't believe that if they did, I wasn't aware of it. Well, that's good. At least the answer isn't, yeah, they did it for my brothers, but but not for me, you know, because a lot of, there were families that would do that, hang it for the men, but not, mm -hmm. not for the woman, even though you were doing just as much, you know, <laughs> very important part of the service. When you're at a parade or something and you see the flag go by, do you think you have a different feeling than I have? Or what's the feeling that you have when you see our flag go by? 
Well, I don't know, really. It, I guess it probably tells me that uh, uh, I had a part in it, and the fact that I served in the service and that the flag was still flying. I don't know, really. Have you ever gone to any reunions of the waves or anything like no. that? No. Mm -mm. So when you were done, yeah. We, we, some of us kept uh, in touch for a number of years, but eventually, you know, we all went our own ways and families and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've had a wonderful life. Hmm? It sounds like you've had a wonderful life. Yes, I've had a wonderful life. I've been, uh, it's been very interesting, and I wouldn't trade it for anything, except that I would like to erase, you know, parts of the of the uh, serving. But then that that's part of it. That's part of my life. So you know, that's just the way I accept it. You know, so. It's interesting because I think people deal with it differently to also. It sounds like for you, uh, it increased a sense of compassion. For some people, um, it, it destroyed them. I mean, it just made them bitter and negative. And even though I see how hard it is for you, even to think about it for half a second, but yet it seems that it, it, it kept your heart alive and, and uh, uh, created a sense of compassion. And I wonder why some end up positive and some end up destroyed by it. Well, I don't know. It, I just, I guess it was happening, so I just learned to accept it. There's just not much else I could do as an individual to change what was going on. And uh, I don't I, I Like I say, I wish it would never have happened, but it did. So... I can only imagine how much you positively affected those soldiers. I've interviewed, uh, I have about 400 hours of interviews now. And I talked to a lot of men and women that had, a lot of the men who had ended up in hospitals like that, and talked about the nurses, and talked about um, the nurses that just talked to them about everyday stuff, mm -hmm. and how important that was. So, that could get them away from the atrocities that they saw, and to, to just talk about what it was like at home when the trees, you know, the flowers blooming. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's a lot of what you did, is, is brought everyday life to them. Well, it's, it's over with and there's nothing I can do about it now. And then it's something I chose to do. So, you know, there I am. Well, thank you very much. That wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> No, it it wasn't, and yet you know it, it, things flashed in my mind as we went. We're not uh, talking anymore, huh? It's it's still on. Oh, I, well, it, me, while, while you say that, I just let me ask one last question. Then I know because they talk a lot about the men having post traumatic, and I had a, a good friend, uh, George Normoyle, that still had nightmares. Is that something that affected you that way also? Because they talked about the men in the service, but they forget that you, know, you were a part of this. Oh, it, it affected me, that's for sure, for years and years, you know. Is it something that you would have nightmares about, or could you... Mm, I don't know that I had nightmares, but um, I would sometimes see people that um, were being helped by some physical aid, and I wonder if it could have been somebody that might have been in the hospital where I was, you know. And you couldn't, I couldn't help but that, you know, think of what they were going through and, and when they were in the hospital, you know, and stuff like that. And yet be thankful that there was a hospital there to help them. Do you think we'll ever have another world war? Do you think we're done with? Pardon me? Do you think that, that what happened in World War II could happen again? Mm. Well, it, 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 some, some things are happening all the time that shouldn't be. That's for sure. Well, I'll, I'll 
turn off the recorder.